Hey guys, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to be updated every time I make a new video. Thanks, let's begin. Ever try fisting a catfish? Try fisting one of these things. Ow! Snakehead Swamp. This is the 2014 killer fish film that has serious bite. Make sure to check out my previous review for Bearing Sea Beast. I'll leave a link to it up here in the corner somewhere, and let's begin. The plot. There's a curse on the swamp, and it's being reawakened via UPS truck crash. And now it's all angry and releasing these toxic snakeheads into the swamp. Well, no, they escape from the truck, but it's the curse, I tell you. Now all these friends and law enforcement have to survive an onslaught against the town from these snakehead creatures. It's got a curse that really needed more fleshing out. A family dynamic that was held up by the good writing but passable performances. It's just a fun movie when it wants to be. The whole curse angle is executed properly. Here's the curse, its backstory, and the way to stop it. However, I never felt the weight of the curse on the characters, except for Mr. Boudreaux. To be fair, they were focusing on the loss of a family member too, so I don't. I, don't, I think it'd be a little too clustered. It'd be a rough act to balance in 85 minutes. Maybe if it was two hours, but not this length. But that does leave you with a lot going on in this movie. And I think writer Greg Mitchell does a commendable job giving everything enough of a presence. For the characters, we have Chris, played by David Davis from Ghost Shark and Ozark Sharks. He's the likable guy who's a good friend, and one of the girls is crushing on him, and he's trying to get over a girl he used to date who is now married to another guy, and he attended their wedding for some reason. Then there's Ashley, played by Ayla Kel, who is the friend to Chris, but you can tell there's something else there. Carly, played by Terry Garber, is the mother of Chris. She is also the law around the area. She's an officer of the law. She's trying to take down all these snakeheads. William Boudreaux, played by Antonio Fargus from Night of the Sharks from 1987, I think, or 88. I didn't recognize him. Now I, never, now I do. He is the voodoo guy who is all up in arms about this curse. Then there's Ian, played by Ross Britz from Zombie Shark and Ozark Sharks. Uh, he's a douche. Carrie Ponter, played by Sloane Co. from Ghost Shark and the Zombie Shark. Isn't half bad looking. I don't know how old she is. Well, this movie came out probably like 18. 18. But she also has a crush on Chris. And kind of wish she was in the movie more. Not just for looks alone, but there could have been more to her character. This film is beautifully shot. I mean, it is gorgeous. The rays of sunlight really accentuate the shots of trees and the boggy areas. It's right on the cover, too. Rays of sun hitting the characters as they run for cover in this house. Mr. Boudreaux's house. Oddly enough, I used to have a teacher named Mr. Boudreaux, and he passed away in my senior year of high school. Rest in peace, Mr. Boudreaux. It's a very pretty movie in terms of natural lighting. However, in terms of effects, that's a different story. The gore, the effects. There is lots of blood spraying around in this movie. Some severed limbs, nothing too gory, but there is some good stuff. I remember writing to the director, Donnie Fontleroy, who also directed Anaconda 3 and 4 and Beast of the Bering Sea. I asked him on IMDb uh, some questions about this movie a long ago when they still had message boards. Um, he basically said there would be gore, but not an insane amount, which... I agree. It's gory, but not too gory. The murky look of the titular snake at a swamp does add to the murk factor, though. That's a thing now. Murk factor. It makes the movie seem gorier than it actually is. Sorry to say, but besides design, the snake heads look like crap. Much like in Beast of the Bering Sea, they're very static, don't, know, don't really know how to bend, um, don't look that good. It really looks like they were pushed around when they're all CG. It's like, how does that happen? It's a weird use of CGI. 
the motion picture soundtrack. It's got the fitting country folk twains as well as some songs for the hip young people in the flick. It's not too memorable, but it does have some decent tracks to it. I do like the uneasy violin work as it fits the Cajun eeriness at play. Andrew Morgan Smith composed this film score as well as some others of note such as Swamp Shark, Arachnoquake, Flying Monkeys, Ghost Shark, Raging Cajun Redneck Gators, Bearing Sea Beast, and Jeepers Creepers 3, and many others. Overall, this has a good story that's properly balanced, characters to root for and to, and to hate, some decent gore, and a fitting musical score. However, the acting is decent at best, the CGI is poorly utilized and rendered, and the story is a bit overwhelming even if utilized in a functional way. I'd say check this one out. It's not the worst Snakehead movie out there, that's for sure. Nowhere near as bad as Night of the Snakehead Fish. I would actually put it in the middle between Snakehead Terror and Frankenfish. I haven't seen its form of the Snakehead, but I don't really want to. Overall, I give Snakehead Swamp. A 2 out of 5. Thank you all for watching, and Lion Brian Gatto, the horror show host. Make sure to like, comment on, as well as share this video. Like my Facebook fan page and support me on Patreon, or even a dollar a month will help keep this channel going on strong, and I'd greatly appreciate it. Plus, you get access to body counts and other music videos that you can't get on YouTube because of copyright and age restriction. Also, if you want to support the channel through PayPal, my PayPal is horrorshow37 at gmail.com. I'd greatly appreciate any contribution. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. Also, hit that notification bell to be notified every time I make a new video, and as always, subscribe!